You never get a second chance to make a good first impression, especially with your in-laws. So how then do you impress your in-laws the very first time? You need to watch this video to find out more. Hi family, this is Winnie School of Elegance, the one channel that shows you how to level up on every area of your life so that you can be the best version of yourself. In today's video, we're going to be showing you what to do when you're meeting the in-laws for the very first time as an elegant person. How must you behave? How must you present yourself? You definitely need to arm yourself with a lot of information with this regard so that you will make the right impression the very first time. So let's get right into it, shall we? Now, before I move into the tips, I want you to know that when you're marrying a person, you are not only marrying that person, you are marrying the entire family, whether you like it or not. And you are at a better advantage if you are in good terms with your in-laws. Trust me, life is always a thousand times better and easier and will run smoother if you are at peace with your in-laws, okay? So with that being said, there are certain keys that can help you become better prepared when you're meeting them for the first time. Now, this in any way does not suggest that you should be totally different from who you are, but there are some very key details that you need to pay attention to so that you will not be caught off guard when you are meeting them for the very first time. Now, this goes for both the ladies and the guys watching this channel right now. Now, the very first point that I've put down here that can help you make the very first impression with your in-laws would be, be very well informed. Gather as much knowledge and information about your in-laws as much as possible. Now you can find this information out from your partner or from members of the family who you probably already met. Now when I say in-laws, I'm actually meaning or referring to like the mother or the father or the uncle, the auntie, those people who are like very important people in a person's life. So when you're meeting them for the very first time, you want to be very well informed. Gather as much information as possible, what they like, what they don't like, what they are like, what their temperament is like, what their mood is like. Are they very conservative people or are they very outgoing people? Are they the social butterflies or are they the very people who just like to be in the house? Are they extremely religious or are they just easygoing, nothing like, just find out as much information as possible when you are meeting them because this would definitely add to your scoreboard. Imagine you meet them and then you are telling them things about them that, that you already know and they're like, oh my gosh, it took the time to find this information out about us and it will also help you know exactly um, what, how to behave, what territory to trample on and where not to go in terms of conversations and stuff like that. Now, you know, they say that knowledge is power, right? Knowledge will put you in a power position and give you all the advantage so that you will not be surprised when you finally encounter this person that you're going to meet. Imagine you being all sassy and and then in your mind, you think that your mother-in-law is going to be like that. Meanwhile, she's one very conservative, quiet woman. And then because you didn't know she was a conservative, quiet woman, you go there with all of your, good morning, madam, how are you doing today? And she's like, kilo shele, baby. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> so it's always important that you um, certainly arm yourself with information on your in-laws or about your in-laws, okay? Now, the next point you should take into consideration is what is the occasion of your visits? Now, there are different scenarios where you could be meeting your in-laws. You could be meeting your in-laws in their house. You could be meeting them in your partner's house. You could be meeting them at a social gathering, at a function. You could be meeting them in a formal um, dinner setting. There are different scenarios where you could be meeting your in-laws and you need to know what the occasion you're meeting them would be. So you need to find out from your partner where you'll be meeting them. That would help you also be very well prepared so that you know maybe your dressing style, what you should look like, how you should look like, what the function is all about. And then also under this point, find out how important this is to your partner that you're meeting their family. So some people do not really care so much about what their family has to say about their personal lives. Some people care so much about it. 
some people care so much about what their mom thinks, what their dad thinks about you. So you need to find out how important this meeting is to your partner. If it matters a great deal to them, then you have to be on your A game whether you like it or not. But if it doesn't really matter, still be on your A game and make a good impression for yourself, not necessarily for your partner. So be very well aware of what the occasion is that will help you get well prepared. And then of course, find out how important the meeting is to your partner, okay? The next point that I've put down here on my list is mind your dressing. My African brothers and sisters will tell you that in this part of the world, dressing is important, especially when you're meeting our fathers and our mothers. Our fathers and mothers are highly conservative people and will judge you based off of your dressing and appearance. <laughs> you don't want to be looking like something totally different from their standard or idea of dressing when you're meeting your in-laws. I promise you this for free. Now, this is not to say that you should not be yourself or dress the way you, sh you want to dress, but family, you need to also understand that wisdom, they say, is profitable to direct. I'll give you a perfect example. I'm gonna use my mom as an example. My mom still even checks the way I dress and I look. My mom will see me putting something, I'm literally fully covered in clothing by my standard. But by my mom's standard, I'm showing too much skin. And I'm like, mom, please calm down, I beg. Like, she literally will say, with her eyes, sometimes she doesn't even talk. She'll say with her eyes, that thing is too short. Or, and in, in my mind, that thing is even getting really close to my knee. That's how conservative she is. So you can imagine my mom and my, my brother brings in his girlfriend and that girlfriend is looking all skimpy and like she doesn't care a thing. <laughs> well, my mom will give you the eye. <laughs> She'll make you feel so freaking uncomfortable. It's not because like she wants you to be uncomfortable, but she's like, nah fam, this girl is not gonna be good enough for my, my son. That's how African people think. I'll give you another example. So there was this particular guy that I was dating and he invited me to his brother's graduation ceremony. Now, the graduation ceremony, you know that a lot of family members will be there. Because I didn't take my time to do my research and find out who the parents of this guy was, I went there looking like I would normally look. I mean, I had my nails fixed. I was still in the university then. I was pretty young. But I've always known how to look good and put together. So I had my nails fixed. I think the length of the nails were this long and I, it was actually the color red. I put on long trousers and I put on my high heels. I had my, my wig and then I had my makeup fully done and fully beat. I put on a pair of nice top and a trouser, tucked it in. I was looking really elegant and very classy. But because I didn't do my research, right? When I got to the graduation ceremony of this, of my boyfriend's, now my ex-boyfriend's um, younger brother and all the family members were, were there, I was looking the odd one out. Because guess what? His mom and his dad are actually all were pastors in an apostolic church. You know how apostolic people dress? I think they dress similar to MFM members. This is not shade. This is just, they are very conservative in their dressing. No jewelry, no earrings, nothing, no makeup. They carry their natural hair. Sometimes they even have to tie the natural hair. So imagine the mom and the dad looking all conservative and every other member of the family looking like that and i'm the one that has my full-blown wig on my flashy face with red lipsticks on my nails all fixed with my high heels and i was shouting down thinking oh i'm going to make a good impression but let me tell you something i i felt so awkward and uncomfortable and i promise you that my my ex-boyfriend's parents kept giving me a very funny stare that I couldn't even stay till the end of the graduation. Two weeks after that party or that event, my ex-boyfriend told me he was going home to see his parents. And I'm like, oh, can I come to see his parents to pick up something from the house? And I'm like, can I come with you? Was like, I can't remember how the conversation went, but he told me that I couldn't come. And I'm like, why? Of course, he, he couldn't tell me why, but I knew that his parents had told him something about me. Few months after that incident, we broke up. And I know too well that it has a lot to do with the fact that 
I was looking some kind of way at that event. Of course, they didn't spell it out to me, but the way they looked at me showed me that they, they didn't approve of my dressing and my outfits. But if I had taken the time to figure things out about them, it would have helped me tone down my dressing a little bit just so that I can make a good first impression. Now again, I'm saying this is not to say that you shouldn't be yourself, but wisdom is profitable to direct. And in that situation, if I really wanted to get them in my corner, there was nothing, there was no harm caused if I toned down my dressing slightly. Do you understand the point? So mind your dressing and knowing who your in-laws are, finding out the information about them would help you know how to dress, what to look like when you are going to meet them. So please pay very close attention to your dressing, okay? The next point that I've put down here on my list is bring a gift and give compliments where necessary. When you're visiting your in-laws, it's important that you bring a gift with you. Never go there empty-handed. Of course, figure out what the occasion is and find out what you can actually bring. And by doing your due diligence on your in-laws, by finding out all the information you can find, you know exactly what to bring. I'm not saying spend a lot of money and buy expensive stuff. A bottle of wine would do if your in-laws are the type of people who indulge in wine. A nice pair of accessories, maybe a perfume, depending on who your in-laws are. For someone like me, if my, my daughter-in-law, I don't have a daughter-in-law yet, I'm not, I don't even have a son yet. But if my daughter-in-law was coming to visit me and she came with a basket of fruits and vegetables, trust me, she has caught some points on my scoreboard. Do you understand? Fruits and vegetables are quite inexpensive. And if she goes ahead to do that for me, I'll know that this girl really paid thoughtful attention to who I was and brought me a gift that she knows that I would actually appreciate. So take a gift with you and then pay compliments when necessary. Pay compliments as much as possible, but don't tell a lie. If, if, you don't, if you don't agree about something, don't go and say, oh, I love the way you look when you don't love the way they look. Do you understand? The next point here on my list is bring your manners with you when you're going to see your in-laws. And under this point, I have be on time. For whatever occasion, better to be early than late. No excuses whatsoever for being late. And if you have a very good excuse, be sure to communicate it respectfully. The second point is be extremely respectful, especially if you are dealing with African parents. Respect to them is like water. When you're greeting them, ensure as a lady you bend a knee, as a guy you bow your head. This will get you high points on their scoreboard. Don't go and meet your in-law, your mother-in-law or your father-in-law that are African and try to be like, hi mama, hi grandma or hi, hi mom, or, hi. No, don't do hi hello here. No, no, that's not our culture. Good morning ma, good morning sir. As a guy, bow your head. As a girl, bend your knee. Let that knee touch the floor if possible. I'm telling you, do more of what they like and less of what you actually like when it comes to being respectful with that greeting. And then of course, some other things under being respectful is mind the tone of your voice, mind how you interact, how you talk, be very respectful, mind the use, the language you use, the, your language choices. And if you're invited to a conversation, join in and contribute, but don't be overly talkative. If you're not in, in, invited, stay away from the conversation. If you're invited to the dinner table, maybe you guys are having dinner or lunch, Take your table manners with you, okay? I have a video coming on dining table etiquette. I'm going to film that video really soon and put it up on the channel very soon. So watch out for it, okay? Now, the next point on my list would be offer to help if need be. Now, if you are, for example, just had dinner with the family, you can offer to clear the dishes, do the dishes, do literally like mini petty things around the house. Like just offer. And if they say, don't bother, don't be don't off overly want to do it to show that you're trying to impress a person. You can just offer once and if they're like, no worry, don't worry about it, it's fine. Another scenario under this point is if you're asked to do something that you would not usually do on a normal day. So maybe your mother-in-law asks you to maybe wash her clothes, which is very un highly unlikely that she would do that. But if she asks you per adventure to do that and naturally, normally you don't do it, Please, by all means, respectfully decline and say that you can't, if possible, for peace and wisdom, 
to rain, right? Give an excuse why you can't. Maybe say that your wrist is hurting, something, just do something to just, that doesn't just suggest that you are saying an outright no to her. If you can't do it, come up with some excuse why you can't do it or find a better solution. So if she asks you to come out and do her, wash her clothes, you tell her, Ma, don't worry, I'm going to take you to the dry cleaners. The laundry service will handle it and deliver it to you in clean condition. That's a way to respectfully decline. But if you can do it, compromise and get it done. Okay? So be handy, be helpful as much as you can. But don't do... Don't go and do what you don't do in your father's house. <laughs> the next point that I've put down here on my list is don't overly promise to do things you can't do. So I know some people when they're so happy and they are trying to impress and they overly will say things that they know they can't do. They make promises like, oh, don't worry, sir, I'm going to send you 500,000. Oh, I'll get that project done. Oh, I'll talk to that partner. I'll talk to that contractor on your behalf. And you know you can't actually get it done, but you promise to do it and you don't do it. And you, or, or rather you can't do it so don't overly promise what you cannot deliver at that time i know i know you want to impress but resist the urge to th tell them something you know that you cannot do or deliver on okay the next point that i've put down here is treat your partner with respect treat your partner respectfully this is not the time for those playful youthful games that you people play when you're with yourselves this is not the time to call your partner names. You know, when you are playing and you're like, <laughs> this stupid guy, Seth. <laughs> like you're playing, but you're calling them names. No parents will tolerate you calling their child names, even if you are playing. So cut out all the name calling, cut out all those play, play, play. Keep that play for when you are away from the house. And then of course, don't be overly PDA. Don't be overly PDA. Now I'm not saying don't be affectionate. You can hold hands. For a bit but don't be overly like oh like you want to glue yourself to your partner when you are in front of your in-laws or you want to now that's the time when you want to kiss and lock tongue and do all that pda things keep that for your bedroom when you're there keep the pda to the barest minimum your parents your in-laws also still wants to know that you can be affectionate and caring uh, in a physical way to your partner so show those things in a very minimal way but don't be overly pda okay the next point that i've put down here on my list is maintain a positive outlook maintain a cheerful look be happy have a smile on your face now i know sometimes you might be an introvert or you might not be a very social sociable person and you might be shy try as much as possible to maintain a very positive outlook be cheerful, be happy, be excited to get involved if you're asked to come or get involved in an activity. Be a little bit enthusiastic, like just not overly, but just a little bit. Show some enthusiasm, show some cheerfulness, give up, give up happy vibes, but don't overdo it. One thing I also put down here under this point is for you to be very pleasant. When someone says something to you, oh, your hair is so beautiful, don't just say thank you. Say, oh my God, thank you so much. I, I appreciate it. Like, with a smile, be pleasant, be cheerful, be happy, be bubbly, be excited, but not overly bubbly and excited. There is a very thin line between being too much and just doing it right. Okay, so do it right. Hmm? The next point that I've put down here on my list is drop your phone, especially when you are on the dining table or when you are having an active conversation with the members of the family. You don't want to be on your phone and you're, somebody is talking to you. Ah, yes, ma, I, I, I know, ma. I'm grateful. Like, I'm happy that I met him. You don't, that's, that's very disrespectful. You don't want to be on the dinner table having dinner with your fa with your in-laws and you're pressing your phone. Drop your phone for two minutes. You will come back to what's happening there. So don't be overly on your phone. It's very disrespectful and it shows that you're not interested or you care nothing about what's actually happening um, at the time. Does that make sense? The next point that I've put down here is be bold but not overly forward. So be very bold. I think this is linked to the previous point that I made. Be bold, ask intelligent questions. When you don't know something, ask a question for clarification. Be bold to make um, suggestions. Be bold to talk about your ideas. When you are invited to a conversation, don't just be mute and quiet. Contribute to what is being talked about. Be involved. Just 
be involved. Open up yourself. Your in-laws don't bite. They want to see the real you. They want to know the real you. So just open up yourself and be involved in what's happening. Be bold and confident enough because trust me, boldness and confidence literally would help increase your score on their scoreboard. On this point as well, I would also say that if you're a shy person, I think you should go work on your shyness a bit because trust me, shyness just puts off um, when you're shy, you look like you have very low self-esteem issues. You look like you can't take charge or control of situations. You look like you can't be trusted with the basic things of life because you're very shy and timid. Nobody wants a shy and timid person as um, an in-law. So if you're shy, go and work on your shyness. Shyness is not a good thing. And I'm going to be, I'm going to be very honest with you. Shyness is certainly not a good thing. You need to learn to be bold. You need to be, you need to learn to be confident. And you can do that by practicing daily. Check online on how to be confident. I have put up videos on this channel as well on how you can be confident, how you can increase your self-esteem. Check out the videos and start to build your confidence level so that when you go meet your in-laws, you know that you are confident enough and bold enough to hold a conversation with them, okay? The next point that I've put down here on my list is be your best self, relax and enjoy the moment. I already said before, your in-laws don't bite. Relax. Okay, relax. No need to feel tense. This moment is about meeting the in-laws. They don't bite. They want to know who you are. You want to know who they are. It's a two-way street. So relax, ease off, be yourself, be yourself and just exude joy and happiness. But in case you don't, <laughs> you are in that place and you, it's not joy and happiness that you feel <laughs> for whatever reason. I'm not so sure what you should do. Maybe you're in the wrong family. <laughs> Because when you go to meet your in-laws, you should be happy and excited. If you're not, there's definitely something wrong. The next point that I've put down here is maintain your composure. Maintain your composure. Now, under this point, I said that if your partner, if your partner's parents are the ones who are acting disrespectful towards you. So you know that respect is a two-way street. And sometimes our African parents don't understand that respect is reciprocal. And they don't know how to respect. And they often blot out disrespectful remarks that they, are, they expect you to just soak up because they feel like, oh, if, if it's coming from them as the elderly ones, you should soak it up. In that situation where your in-laws are the ones who are dishing out the respect to you, something that you can do as an elegant person is to maintain your composure. Take the high road, swallow it up, take it all in, and then wait until you have left your presence to deal with the situation with your partner. Never pay disrespect for disrespect, especially with your in-laws. It might just even be that they are setting you up. And if peradventure they continue in the disrespect or the disrespectful remarks or the disrespectful behavior and you cannot take it anymore because you also deserve to be respected. But if they continue in it and you can't take it anymore, I'd advise that you get up respectfully just tell them that you have to leave in a very respectful way and get out the door. And of course, this would mean that you need to re-evaluate your relationship with your partner because if you're getting disrespected from, their, from his or her parents on your first meeting, then there's certainly, definitely something wrong with the relationship and you need to really evaluate things depending on whatever it is. So accept no disrespect from anyone. If they're disrespectful to you, maintain your composure don't engage in any physical banter with your parents. Stay calm, stay cool, stay connected as an elegant person. I think I have a video on the channel where I said, um, where I talked about how to deal with disrespectful and rude people. Check out that video on how to just calmly deal with disrespectful and rude people so that you know exactly how to deal with your in-laws if they are the ones being disrespectful to you. That's pretty much all the tips that I have on how you can make a, first in a good first impression when you're meeting your in-laws for the very first time. If there are other tips that you think that I may have missed out from this list, let us continue the conversation in the comment section down below. I also want to know if there are more so that I can learn as well. And I'm sure other people watching this channel would want to know as well. So please kindly leave a comment in the comment section down below and let's all learn together. All right, family, my job here is done. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, remember to stay elegant.